Shane Dawson's now deleted short film, I Hate My Selfie, is based off of an essay from this infamous YouTuber's best selling book with the same title and presumably the same low quality writing and off putting themes. Watching this 13 minute movie was like having the world's nastiest 11 year old come into your house while you watch them slowly empty out their pockets onto your carpet. Like, thank you so much, now it's too noisy in here and I have to look at all this garbage you brought into my life. With awful characters, terrible hairstyles, and more vomit than I care to see, watching this movie feels like waiting overnight in the lobby of an understaffed emergency room. I've seen enough to truly believe that Shane Dawson might be one of the most unskilled storytellers to ever call themselves a writer and director at this level, and this creepy coming-of-age story further cements that belief. Despite a production value that would be admirable if it were in service of a better story, I Hate My Selfie is a cliche, gross, and ultimately meaningless attempt at comedy with unpleasant surprises in every frame, making this one of the most deserving videos to ever be scrubbed from Shane's channel. So let's get our hands weirdly sticky with another Shane Dawson flavored installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and YouTube content. And we say, hold up, wait a minute, let me put my two cents in it by breaking it down into tiny little clips so that we can decide on an individual clip by clip basis, is this okay or is this the worst thing? And today it's an easier decision than usual because we're looking at Shane Dawson content. This particular short film was actually deleted from YouTube. So someone sent me a re-uploaded link. Shout out to you, internet sleuthers. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more Shane Dawson clip breakdowns like this. But most importantly, if you're new here, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know. We're trying to hit 200,000 subscribers in the Nick D crew. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon where you can unlock exclusive bonus content and watch parties. Sometimes I feel like movies will have just voiceover or narration in them because it's the compulsory thing to do when you're making a movie. We need to smash that belief. A lot of times voiceovers and narrations and framing devices like the one we're about to see are added just as a crutch or they don't do anything. Tell me if you feel the same way with Shane introducing his story to us on this day. A wise person once said, prom is only for whores and for the gross men that want to my grandma was a smart lady. If she's so smart, then why did she go on let you thinking that you were funny as a child? A little too generous with the compliments there, grandma. Like, was she also the genius who said you should start your short film with us looking into the open mouth of your empty closet while that half-written joke crawls out of your ass? Was she the one who said it? Was she the one who said it, Shane? I hate this open closet. It's so messy in there. And I mean, I get that he was probably trying to make it look like a YouTube background and very relatable and authentic. No. It looks lazy. Even if your movie absolutely had to have this messy open closet background, which I don't think it's well justified here for any reason, but even if you were dead set on that, then why wouldn't you design it so that it has a bunch of fun Easter eggs so that when your fans go back and rewatch this 13 minute piece of garbage, they have something to look at besides your boring face. You know, like I think of like the beginning of the movie Us when they show that TV screen, every little thing on the shelf around it was something you could read and it would foreshadow the story of the movie. He could be doing that here, but with Easter eggs that shout out to his fans or put fan art back there. Like there's lots of ways he could have made that interesting, but they literally just like threw what was ever in there. And like, it just, it's this, ugh. and these Christmas lights send me right to hell. We'll see these Christmas lights often throughout the movie. I'll get to that. And also like that was the, that whole line I just showed you was his cold open. Wasn't funny, didn't set up the movie at all. Standard Shane humor. Humor. Gender Shane humor. Anyway, he's gonna be more offensive here. So I'm sorry. <laughs> You see that morbidly obese girl with a back sweat and orangutan titties? That was me! All I see is a man made out of pillows wearing a Chucky wig. It's clear that Shane really hated himself when he was at that weight, but why does he have to describe his appearance in a way that is not only degrading to himself, but also somehow most women and orangutans? And you know, I'm not saying we can't poke fun at our own appearances. I myself am working with a mixed bag of facial proportions and a hairline that is slowly stepping away from the public eye, so I can appreciate a good self-read, but I mean, maybe do it in a way that isn't also insulting to your viewers and fans who might feel like you're also making judgments about their body type. Shane's character in this movie, he pretty much starts painting himself as the uncool victim of the world right away. People barely even knew I existed. <laughs> 
oh my god, I'm so sorry, I didn't see you there. It's okay, don't worry about it. Like, I wasn't even looking down at my phone or anything. Like, you were right there and I didn't see you. It's like you were invisible. And also somehow weightless, then someone half your size just knocked you down like you were a dizzy toddler. Is Gigi Gorgeous wearing an iron bra here? Also, it looks like he was just as responsible for not looking where he was going, but it's really important that we all feel bad for him for this story to work. Shout out to the girl with the black hair. She was like, oh my God. Like, no, we didn't ask you to mouth words, sweetheart. I get it. No, like you were a ghost in this moment. And it's like, you didn't even exist to me. Isn't that crazy? Crazy to think that any of this dialogue is supposed to be funny when even the actress delivering the line doesn't seem to get the joke. With all of Shane's humor, I can more or less see where he was trying to go with making it funny because honestly, the humor is not that unique from the stuff that was on Nickelodeon and Disney Channel shows at the time. And those shows had really funny moments, but Shane's always fall through on the execution from the writing to the performance to the editing. Also, I think this isn't really a clear way of showing that he was in visible because it was just two people walking into each other. I mean, he would have had to see her coming too if he weren't eating Cheetos. It would have been funny if she like dumped her food on him because she thought he was a trash can or if she tried to sit down and on a seat he was sitting in and then got scared when she saw him. So she pepper sprayed him. But even just the physics, like he just told us he's obese and this tiny young girl just knocked him down. So are you invisible? Do you stick out like a sore thumb because of your size? Like it can be both, but the scene needs to make it feel more invisible. You know how every school has what's commonly referred to as the crazy tree. It's a tree that looks like it was ripped out of a Tim Burton movie and only the rejects and misfits hang out under it. Okay, if every school had one of those trees, you wouldn't have had to continue describing it with such trite, boring narration. Also, we see later that this is all supposed to take place during 2006, which I guess is why Shane told that kid, you better hold on to this Nokia phone as conspicuously as possible, since it's the only prop we could think to find that was appropriate to the period. Again, I feel like this is Shane just not realizing how he can work within his limitations to make a more effective film. We're getting a lot of extra detail here. First of all, doing something period is really hard to do on a low budget, especially a more like retro period, which is like early thousands when it's not exactly vintage pieces that you can replicate. It's stuff you'd have to buy on eBay. It's subtle touches. There's no reason why he couldn't have just set this in contemporary times. No one's gonna notice one way or the other. I get that in the essay, this took place back in a real period of time, but that's not really important to this story. Also, this Tim Burton looking tree looks lame. You just put some garbage in it and some toilet paper. There's no reason to have this crazy tree in the whole movie whatsoever. We never come back to it later in the movies. Just write it out. Just because it was in your short story doesn't mean it's important enough to make the film. Your film is only 13 minutes, so get rid of the tree. Or I'm gonna sneak out here one night and chop it down dressed like a young George Washington if that's what I gotta do to get a decent script out of you. I feel like this short film was done very closely after Not Cool, another feature film that we've reviewed the creation of heavily on this channel, because it has the star, Jeremy Lee, from that movie in this one. Hey, Shane, can I talk to you over here for a second? Over by the trash can on fish stick day? This must be important. You would think so, but apparently that's not a requirement to become a New York Times bestseller. Look at Shane's fat suit right now. He looks like he's a bag of marshmallows. And I would know because I'm going through one bag of those every week now. I'm trying to eat healthier. It says it's a fat-free food. I just love the smell of them. <gasps> Did you find that fish sticks joke funny? No, because why would you have to go stand next to any particular trash can? You can stand anywhere in the whole world. You're just writing in jokes that don't feel natural and I don't like it. That's Kelly. She was pretty much the Jay-Z to my Beyonce. Mm. I see more like the Lydia to your Beetlejuice. Jeremy Lee was Shane's resident sad girl actress for this era. For some reason, I've only seen him put her in something where she has this hold back ponytail and two antennas of hair. Like we have other options. A lot of people commented in my not cool video that she's now a successful voiceover artist for lots of anime shows, so good on her. Here's Shane describing Kelly and his relationship. She even came out of the closet to me. It was pretty emotional. Are you looking at the guy? No. Are you? No. Well then let me show you something really crazy. That was your idea of an emotional coming out scene? How would you show two characters getting married? Have them vlogged in the town square? But anyway, Kelly has some sort of question for Shane. Remember this moment, because this, this is why the story doesn't work later. Will you go to prom with me? Only if you let me color match your foundation that day, because someone has powdered your face with orange tang as though you're the queen of the space station. This poor girl. Justice for Jeremy. Did the principal put you up to this? I keep telling him I'm not dying. I just have that dying kid resting face. 
Yeah, I agree. There is a lot of death and destruction happening on your face right now. This double chin prosthetic looks like a neck goiter. The latex piece is not wide or like jowly enough to make this part look thicker and his neck look wider. So he really just kind of looks like a bullfrog. And then the hair just dwarfs his head even more. Also, I noticed that the appliances painted a flesh color, but they didn't add any red undertones to it. I would stipple on red and blend that out because it looks very lifeless and fake, like he's some sort of less confident leather face. Before we go any further, I want to thank the sponsors of today's video, Every Plate. Every Plate delivers pre-portioned ingredients and recipe cards delivered right to your door, contact free. You know, I've tried three or four different meal kit services before this, and all of them were just a little too expensive for my taste. Every Plate gives me the same fresh, delicious food for a much better price. These recipes come together in about 30 minutes, which is much faster than even a single trip to the grocery store for me, where I will end up buying a lot of extra stuff that I don't need anyway. And since I'm getting just the right amount of ingredients, I'm not wasting money and each meal ends up costing about the same as a cup of coffee. Look at this gorgeous meal I made in no time using that easy to follow recipe card. Oof, so good. I want it again. And it was so much healthier than ordering takeout from a restaurant. Get started with every plate for just $1.99 per meal plus an additional 20% off another two weeks by going to everyplate.com and entering the code NICTORAMIO199. That's up to a $100 value. So visit everyplate.com and use NICTORAMIO199 to save baby. Now, let's get back to this video. I know it's dumb, but I, I really do want to go. I mean, the only time I've ever worn a dress was at my grandma's funeral, and I didn't even get to enjoy it. I had to change into something that would cover up my boobs so I could carry the casket. <sighs> Yeah, funerals are tough. Honestly, I'd rather be at a funeral, open casket, because then I would at least be looking at the face of somebody I care about. Like this whole exchange didn't have a punchline. It was just an unusual thing to say that nobody laughed at. Like the time I asked my doctor if my high blood sugar was cause I had such a sweet ass. He said no. Ah, <sighs> you guys, I obviously blurred and censored the vomit. You're not gonna see anything, but there's vomit. You guys didn't eat those fish sticks, did you? They were really, really old. Really, really old. I gotta tell somebody! A cartoonishly low class older person and fake vomit in one scene? At what point do the audiences of Shane's movies qualify for natural disaster relief from the government? Even this fake vomit thing is annoying because you can see one girl holding the water bottle of her fake vomit liquid in her hand when she does this, and the other guy has it in his sweatshirt pocket that's facing the camera. You can say maybe those are just bottles of orange juice, but why are they holding bottles of orange juice when they do this gag? That's stupid too. Before I knew it, it was already time to lie on the floor and have my mom help me zip up my tuxedo pants. I'm sorry! <laughs> Ma'am, you are positively thrashing that child's genitals right now. It would be so great if there were any sort of introspection about all of this and not just pointless gags about his clothes not fitting. For example, did he have any thoughts about going to the prom or is he just going because his friend asked? Does he feel nervous about how it's gonna look when he's there? Does he feel excited? It just basically cuts to him being like, and then before I knew it, it was prom time. I'm like, okay. As I pulled up to Kelly's house, I started to get nervous. I'm really not sure why. It's not like it was a real date. Is this supposed to be funny when they just put the ugliest thing possible on screen? Cause I can pull out one of my eczema folds to test the theory, but I know we won't be laughing. Mama gets crispy. We get this moment with the parents inside. This gives me huge heart pain. Take care of my daughter. Give her a good. Oh, no, no. Sorry, I was trying to have all of my nightmares about that up front and get it out of the way, but now I guess I will have that hypnotist turn me into a baby again. I can't with this. Like, now we really get tasteless. You look like a child prostitute, but happy about it. I can't even get into your gross joke because I'm too distracted about those chicken cutlets that are trying to jump off your face right now. Can we still peel those off and get them breaded for dinner tonight? That makeup is not holding up well under these close-ups. We just gotta say it for sure and loud and proud. Just stick an old man's in my mouth and force me to Maybe one day. I don't think so, dear. Damn. Look, I know I can't afford a ticket on one of those new Elon Musk space shuttles, but if you can just like bungee cord me to one of the thrusters, I just gotta get some time away from the planet where all of that was just said and done. So awful. Like, it's not funny, it's just gross. <laughs> anyway, let's just get to the prom, so hopefully I can lose control of my ESP and burn the place to the ground. <laughs> Okay. Apparently, Shane wanted his big budget prom scene to be seen through the cinematic lens of my astigmatism. Why is this wide shot blurrier than the memory of why I ever started studying films to begin with? Poorly blocked, poorly shot, poorly lit. Shake my t 
I hate that he has all of the people clustered into the center. I hate that we have these two visible lights shining right into the lens. I don't like that he only establishes the prom through this basic shot of the camera being up high. I wanna see, again, a couple establishing shots. Give me the camera moving through. Give me some close-ups of people having fun. It doesn't take long. You got all those people there and you're not getting any coverage of them. It's a big waste. And as always, giving your frame layers is gonna make the shot feel a lot more dynamic. So get that camera moving, get a wheelchair, wheel yourself through the crowd, have people passing in front of it. Spend more than two minutes getting your big shot and then spend the rest of your life apologizing to me for giving me this to watch. I do accept money in the form of money. So these two crazy kids get to the prom and pretty much instantly, I guess the main conflict of this movie pops up. We're about at the halfway point, so it makes sense. These are all the lesbians at our school clustered into one big tornado of lesbian. Wait, does Shane think lesbian means some kind of cabaret dancer? Or maybe he's just really overestimating how funny that word sounds, because he's using it a lot, like as much as possible. Come on, we requested Evanescent. Go ahead. Really? Save me a dance. Deal. <laughs> Wait, I thought she had no friends because she was sitting alone by the freak tree with you. Why do all of these other lesbians now want to include her? This is such a confusing aspect of the story. She made no mention of this in the invitation. And I think it could have been used uh, at some point, like maybe if she got dropped off by the group of lesbians at the freak tree at the beginning of this movie and his voiceover even could have been like, We're been, we've been close forever, but she recently came out and has been slowly hanging out with more of the lesbians. But I know we'll always have this great relationship because we're the Beyonce and Jay-Z of our stupid friend. Then this could come as a little bit more of a shock when she like wants to go dance with someone else at the party. And even in her invitation, my dad said he wants me to go to prom with a guy. They could have built that out more where it's like, oh, she has to pretend to be boyfriend and girlfriend with him. So they do the whole picture at the house thing. And then the dad's jokes become even more uncomfortable. The dad could be like, I'm going to talk to you about having sex with my daughter. And he's like, ooh. That would give this a lot more story to it. Another thing they could have done is if when she asked him out, she's like, you need to come to the prom with me. I'm too nervous to go by myself, but my ultimate goal is to ask Tiffany to dance with me. And that's like one of the lesbians or whatever. And she like has a girl crush. Then all of this would have felt a little more earned when she's like, I gotta go with them. Cause then it's like, okay, I'm gonna support my friend while she finds her lesbian friends. Anyway, Shane goes and makes friends with the chocolate fountain. That's a lot of exposed arm hair creeping towards that chocolate, making me nervous. I don't wanna see any more chocolate fountains post pandemic, okay? Just like I don't wanna see any more Christmas lights in the background of these damn shots. They threw up Christmas lights all over the place because it gives you a little bit of a bokeh, soft focus effect when it's in the background and it fills a lot of negative space because they're in some studio here. I don't like it. I just don't like it. And if you like it, I think you're lame too. And now we have to battle. I felt a tap on my shoulder from my teacher, Mrs. Smith, and to say she was slightly intoxicated would be an understatement. What are you doing over here? At this point, I think we're all just waiting for something interesting to happen in this movie now that it's two thirds over. Also, if this woman is supposed to be drunk, she's playing it way too small because right now she's just reading as another SAG eligible actress who had no better offers for that day. Like her hair should be big and messed up. She should be stumbling when she comes over. She just has her hair pulled back in that simple, we didn't hire anyone for hair ponytail. Also, they had to awkwardly find coverage to make room for his voiceover introduction of the character. She goes, what are you doing over here? And then silent pause while he says, that's my teacher, Mrs. Smith. But they clearly didn't plan for that voiceover because you can see Shane's mouth moving during that voiceover. So it's like a reaction shot from later in the scene that they just moved over here. Your voiceover is not good or helpful. And also you didn't even plan to shoot it. What kind of half-assery is this? Anyway, I think the movie is now supposed to be about how his teacher believed in him and like changed his life on this night in this crazy unconventional way. So what happened to your date? Typical stuff. She left me for a bunch of lesbians. That's so sad, it's almost hilarious. Mm, I think at best we're about three script revisions from Hilarious. And I don't mean rewrites from Shane, okay? I want this done by someone who actually understands three-act structure and doesn't hate themselves. It's so funny that I have to keep shoving Nutter Butters down my throat to keep the laughs from coming out. Uh-oh, here comes another one. Uncontrollable laughter, can't relate. Also, I don't think those are laughs you're suppressing, Shane. I think it's more unfunny dialogue because you're focusing too heavily on the wrong part of joke writing. All of this comedy has more painful buildup than my calcified liver, and it always ends with an unfunny exchange that fails to escalate the humor, like it's trying to. I'll write a joke that could have been in this movie. Pretend that I'm one of the random losers that's sitting at the tree. And they were like, even she has a date to the prom. This girl is like, I'm going to the prom with Jeremy. You mean the guy with hairy nipples who smells like shit? 
Yeah, they say one day his nipple hair will touch the ground. Well, then you'll have something in common. And then some third person will be like, my grandma's nipples touch the ground too. Like, it's just the worst thing. That wasn't funny. That was just a bunch of shit. And then everyone makes one of these faces. Like, I'm gonna smack you. Let's take this most recent joke and workshop it. Why don't we? It's so funny that I have to keep shoving Nutter Butters down my throat to keep the laughs from coming out. Uh-oh, here comes another one. This could have been like, oh, you know, the typical, she dumped me for a bunch of lesbians. And then the teacher is like trying not to laugh or she, but she's drunk. So she's like, oh, I'm so sorry, but it's so sad that you almost have to laugh. And then Shane's like, yeah, that's actually why I'm shoving Nutter Butters down my throat. I'm trying to stop myself from sobbing with laughter. Then it's like the same joke basically, but not told in a way that's not funny. Like you just make it sound like natural dialogue. You make it sound like you're actually a clever person and not just the least funny human on the planet whose teachers felt bad for you. And I feel bad for you now too because this is embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for you. I'm embarrassed for you that you did this, baby, baby, baby. I'm just kidding. Power to the filmmakers. Doesn't mean I have to like it. This whole thing just kind of feels like Shane's story is meant to be like, I was such a weirdo that the teachers felt cool enough to talk to me while they were drunk. And even when they were drunk, they thought I was cool and they told me what was up. None of it matters. When you go to college, you're a loser nobody, no matter how cool you were in high school. I can't get over the fact that his hair is making him look a full six inches taller. He looks like Uncle Fester visited a wig shop on Hollywood Boulevard. This cliche message of, oh, this won't matter once you get to college, it's not even well explored here. And it's the same message we had in Not Cool, basically. But the conflict is not strong or developed enough. You know, like, we didn't get enough of him feeling left out or sad right after she he was ditched by his friend. Like, we needed a moment of him actually feeling sad about being lonely and realizing he might not have a place at the school now that she's finding her group, what's left for him. It's sort of this whole, like, permanently unique thing where it's like, I don't fit in anyway. It's like, eh, fit in with people that I hate. <laughs> Just kidding. No hate. All love. Positive vibes only. In 10 years time, we're gonna be way cooler than any of these assholes. Seriously. You got something special. Why did that teacher just go, hey, Hong Kong, you've got something special. In case you missed it, this is really a story about how everybody slept on Shane's talent when he was a kid. Why? Because he had iMovie and wanted to be famous, just like everyone. Do you wanna dance? I mean, isn't that inappropriate? <laughs> Come on, you only live once! Jeez, lady, don't yell at me like I'm the girls' basketball team. This actor's performance as the drunk teacher is all over the place. I need them to help me understand why she's even drunk right now. She's not gonna play it up. I don't think it's super realistic for a teacher to be drunk at a school function anyway, and if so, that's sad. So basically, like, I don't know what details of this are true or not when Shane wrote it, so it doesn't hurt to take some artistic liberties. But I mean, like, if she was secretly sneaking booze and like, whatever, or like, could somehow get to the heart of why she was drinking rather than she just make it funny, like, Mrs. Smith always seemed so happy at school, but now I thought maybe she's lonely and we all just are trying to, you know, like write it in. Uh, why do we have to go back to like screenwriting 101, not even screenwriting, just writing 101. Write a five paragraph essay once in a while and remind yourself how to do this. I had never danced before in my life. And honestly, I was okay with her being my first experience. I mean, what's better than slow dancing with your drunk teacher at your senior prom? I don't know, but is that supposed to be a joke or are you just literally reminding us what we're seeing on screen right now? Like, not to be rude, but you're making this important moment of your life seem very uninteresting. Your whole childhood could have been an email. Anyway, Kelly comes back later on and is like, can we have our final dance together? Now that I knew how to dance, I grabbed Kelly's hand and led her through the last dance of the night. It was pretty romantic. Well, except for that whole, you know, me having a penis makes her physically ill part. That's not how lesbians work. She's probably just reacting to your repulsive sense of humor. This is where I think we could have had them meet at that freak tree that he had to bring up at the beginning and be like, even though the prom was over and she had found her group, like maybe all the lesbians are leaving and they're like, we love you, Kelly. And then she's like, hey, sorry, we didn't get a chance to dance. And then they're like, you can still dance right here. And then they dance by the freak tree. Then it's like, even though we're gonna maybe move on after college and I'm gonna find my group or my people, we'll always remember that we had each other as each other's prom dates and made each other feel like we belonged here. Then it's about like how your friendship really set you up for success later in life, even though you maybe can't be with them forever or that it just helped you find your forever family, if you will. But no, we stuck around here. We don't care. It's all bad. Whatever, 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 whatever. I knew it. Nothing like a sudden supernatural twist to tell the world, I don't know how to end a screenplay. Shane manages to finish this film without really letting us know what he learned from this experience. Other than that, his teacher has a drinking problem and no one really liked him that much. And then we get this awful ending where he's like, yeah, we did try to lose each other's virginity or whatever after prom. Yeah, I'm 
definitely a lesbian. Um, that was the most inappropriate episode of Reading Rainbow I've ever seen. Reading Rainbow! Reading Rainbow. I'm definitely a lesbian. What are your guys' thoughts on I Hate My Selfie? I was shocked by how similar this was to Shane's most awful and longest piece of work, Not Cool, but also just how inept all of the story writing is. All of the film, like this book must be awful. I have to watch Rachel Oates' video about this because uh, I that book sounds nasty. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns like this one. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. I upload two new videos every week, so turn on notifications if you always want to be updated when I've got a new book to take a look at. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon where you can access exclusive clip breakdowns, watch parties, and other extras. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for diving into some more Janie content with me today. I will see you next time.